ass, stuffing them shits in the safe. Got me a spot out the way. Nigga just trying to be safe. Let's get to sports talk. Packers and Niners, now the Breeze is back. Here for it? I am here for it, but not for that reason. I did not need Drew Brees to return to prove that the Saints could destroy the Cardinals as they did. That defense is the reason why that game was not even close. They held them under 250 yards, zero touchdowns. And by the way, they didn't have Alvin Kamara either. Yeah, no, I am here for it because the ceiling you would presume on Drew Brees is higher than the ceiling with Teddy Bridgewater. Like, did I think that was a team with Teddy Bridgewater that could win a Super Bowl? That was a lot shakier on ice. Not that idea than I would be with Drew Brees. And hey, one good thing about this with Drew Brees, it was a thumb injury. You figure if that's done, it's taken care of. He got a nice break from taking those hits. These older dudes, as the year goes on, tend to waver a little bit. He just basically got five week vacation. Next up, the Eagles. Philly went into Buffalo and dumped the Bills 31-13. So if I said the Eagles season has turned after this win, are you here for it? No, nah, I would not go that far. I think they just got to play against Buffalo, which is our annual is this an imposter uh, team when we look at them and try to get this figured out. They got a bad Josh Allen game. And once you get a bad Josh Allen game, you can turn this thing around. And that Buffalo defense, we're asking for so much out of them when they have such an inconsistent quarterback. I feel obligated to praise the Eagles because I did not think they could even do that because they were turning into a reality show where everybody throws drinks on each other last week. But now against the Bills, you're right, man. That defense, they did not hold up, gave up all those points. And Josh Allen against a secondary that a Josh Allen should be able to feast on when starving. Up next, Adam Gase. Jets lost to the Jaguars and Sam Darnold threw three interceptions. If I say Gase would not survive this season after that loss, I'm here for it. I am not here for it because I don't think Adam Gase gets fired this season. I think he has a good chance of... Let me put it like this. The Saints played so good without Breeze being in there because a Sean Payton play calling, he could make that offense go without Drew Breeze even being in there. Bridgewater went 5-0 as a starter for them to get them to 6-1 and hold them off of Drew Brees. That shows you Sean Payton is an elite Coach could play a system for his quarterback that's in there and look at the look at the result. Six and one. Cause his play call. The Eagles, they're a good team, but they up and down. They still got Deshaun Jackson in there. They played against a good defense and put up 31 points. And they could continue being consistent and play it the rest of the year, they can make it to the playoffs. But I feel like they still is. It's just they can't keep continue being inconsistent. Cause they still could win their division if Dallas lose and they have to play Dallas again. That could determine who could win that division still. But but they got to be consistent of playing and of Adam Gates. He do not put Sam Donald in a white situation. He haven't done too much for real to show why he got this coaching job with the Jets. With, with the uh, with the Jets, like he he haven't shown the one. He got one playoff with Miami, and you still have to figure out how did he get this job? What position he need to put his quarterback in? He keep put him in bad situations. Like he had three interceptions. It's on Donald to not make the mistakes, but it's also his head coach to call the right play to put him in good situations. Turning, even if Gardner Minshew should have wiggled him to death. My thing with Gase is that he has a relationship with the owner. 
He was the guy who helped pick the GM. I don't think that relationship goes south this quickly. It does if they go 2-14, and 14, right? Like, if they go 2-14, and 14, he's fired. If he goes 3-13, and 13, that's looking extra shaky. <laughs> Four, he probably keeps his job. Now, I feel like if this team could stay healthy, they had a chance to win four or something like that in this. They look so bad in the course of this game that I look at it and say, no, they might be a 2-14 and 14 team, and they get the coach fired. And now, the Falcons. That's the same. That's the same. That's the same thing, though. They need to learn how to use Le'Veon Bell. You don't necessarily always have to keep him in the backfield. You can line him up as a wide receiver and use all his skill sets. Use him right. That's why I say his play calling is iffy. You sign a running back that can do everything and you still don't know how to utilize him like that. Atlanta lost its sixth straight game, this time to the Seahawks. So if I said to you that Dan Quinn deserves to get fired, are you here for it? Yeah, I mean, deserve, but you know, as Wise Flops has said, deserve ain't really got nothing to do with it. The question is whether that would do anything for the Falcons. If they went and they fired Dan Quinn today, what is that changing? What is that improving for them? So I figure he probably makes it through the year, but I mean, obviously there's no chance he's back next year. The issue with Dan Quinn and what he did over the offseason was that he turned over all of his staff, all the coordinators were out. Instead, he constructed a billboard that said Dan Quinn on it, and that billboard is currently on fire. So, I don't know who the solution is, but I do know that if you have your stamp on this team, and specifically the defense, the way that Dan Quinn does, my lord, it's time for you to go. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download.